You're in for a very harsh lesson, Mr. Blau. Yes, Mrs. Lincoln. Mr. Goldberg will be here in 10 minutes, Mr. President. Very well. Now, would you please contact the Attorney General? Have him join us, too. Very well, Mr. President. Have a seat, Mr. Blau. You are in for a very long evening. Investigate the position of the steel industry, Bethlehem and U.S. Steel, in relation to price fixing and antitrust laws. Violations of the laws? Yes, violation. Have a look at the company's expense accounts, personnel records, subpoena them. I want everything you can find in those people. How soon? I want them on my desk first thing tomorrow morning. Anything else? No. Oh, wait, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, would you like some coffee? The simultaneous and identical actions of United States Steel and other leading steel corporations increasing steel prices by some $6 a ton constitutes a wholly unjustifiable and irresponsible defiance of the public interest. In this serious hour of our nation's history, when we are confronted with a grave crisis in Berlin and Southeast Asia, when we are devoting our energies to economic recovery and stability, when we are asking reservists to leave their homes and families for months on end, and servicemen to risk their lives and four were killed in the last two days in Vietnam. Mr. President? Just a minute, I'm not finished yet. When we are asking uh, union members to hold down their wage requests at a time when restraint and sacrifice are being asked of every citizen, the American people will find it hard, as I do, to accept the situation in which a tiny handful of steel executives whose pursuit of private power and profit exceeds their sense of public responsibility and shows such utter contempt for the interest of 185 million Americans. Sir, Some time ago, I asked each American to consider what he would do for his country. And I asked the steel companies. In the last 24 hours, we've had their... Sir, Mr. President. Yes. We have a specific instruction to stop surveillance of the girl from the Attorney General. You, you mean this came through your section just now? Yes, sir from the Attorney General. Okay. Take the mail off for 30 seconds. And then you have them straight back on her again. Double the detail. And any man who loses sight of her will report to me personally and be dismissed personally. Keep on her. And those journalists with the steel story interview them in the middle of the night so that they know what kind of an attorney general we have. Hoover uh, didn't come up with anything helpful about the steel executives. Yes, but just why did he send his agents in in the middle of the night? I don't know. Maybe we ought to know. He doesn't tell me what time his uh, agents get their prey out of bed. Yes, well, uh, let's just make sure he does tell us next time. Yeah, but you've embarrassed the steel men by saying that they're pursuing a private profit at the public expense. That was right on target. Yeah, we're winning. But they're not in violation of the antitrust laws, nor in uh, conflict with the Constitution. Yes, but they did try to throw us a curveball, and I wouldn't go for it. Now I'm trying to bend them with reason. What happens if they come back with a compromise? Won't accept it. I'll publish their expense accounts if I have to. I'll expose them until they squeal. We're not going to back off until we've won. <laughs> What is your attitude as of now, Mr. President, toward Bethlehem Steel? Well, I have uh, received a kind letter from them. Would you reveal its contents, Mr. President? Yes, they wrote, uh, you're even worse than Harry Truman. <laughs> Sir. Are you not concerned that your relationship with the steel industry is at a low, and with industry at large also, Mr. President? Well, I, uh, I think there's room for improvement on both sides. Uh, I don't think it's uh, wholly inaccurate to say that uh, I was the second choice of the uh, majority of American businessmen, the office of president. And who was their first choice? Anyone else. <laughs> we have received our report on Premier Castro. Uh, what are you prepared to tell me of the Soviet position? That, uh, naturally, we are in sympathy with the people of Cuba. Well, we know that, uh, Ambassador Dobrina. And uh, that we are not sympathetic to any move by the United States government toward aggression against Cuba. Lessons have been learned in the past. I think you will agree. Yeah, I uh, think uh, the American people will be the judge of whatever lessons they may uh, choose to learn. I simply wish to have informal assurance that uh, in no way whatsoever will the Soviet Union support anti-American aggression from Cuba. 
that you have my formal confirmation that the Soviet Union has no intention of starting a war, you may pass that on to the president. I, uh, I hope you will. I certainly will. Whitey Castro sent his brother Raul to Moscow. To where? Moscow. You know, the capital of Russia. But did he do that? Yes, he did. Why do you suppose the Soviets are moving their ships out of the uh, Baltic and the Black Sea ports? Put yourself in Khrushchev's shoes. Well, they wouldn't fit the vice president. <laughs> Khrushchev's a peasant, Castro's a peasant. Their kind helps each other. What do you think? I just told you. They love each other so much, they'd feed off each other's garbage. I don't know if I'd phrase it like that. Nobody's saying you would, buddy. Now, uh, let's not argue, boys. Well, uh, the way you've been campaigning for him, Mother, uh, he really doesn't need any more help. Now, don't worry, Ted's gonna win that seat and he's gonna win it on his own. What's this? Cuba. Soviet. Let me finish. So how's Dad? The doctor seems hopeful, but uh, it's hard on your father. You know how he is. He likes to be in charge. And uh, he cries a lot. Well, of course, that's all part of the neurological damage, but I... I think he hates that the most. Well, uh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, would you please give him my love and uh, tell him I'll call again tonight? I will. But that will cheer him up. I have to go now. Bye-bye, uh, uh, Mother. Bye-bye. These are the latest U-2 photos of Cuba. The Soviets have sent missiles to Castro. Are we certain of that? Yes, sir. Soviets and uh, Castro. Well, well, well. You are sending armaments to Premier Castro. We did not seek a thermonuclear war. You are sending nuclear arms to within striking distance of this country. There can be no question the Soviet Union seeking to make an act of aggression. Are you sure? Naturally. Why, uh, naturally? The matter has a personal dimension. We talk to each other here, uh, confidentially, uh, as colleagues, without record. It is uh, a matter of personal trust. Okay, uh, Mr. Ambassador. No missiles in Cuba. You have my word. We must destroy them immediately, Mr. President. Once those missile sites are operational, say nine or ten days, the warning time from launch to target is only a matter of moments. Thank you, General. Mr. President, this is a Soviet challenge, and I emphasize Soviet. I want to give my full support to your view that this crisis is indeed a major one. Furthermore, the presence of missiles directed at this country is a threat to the entire free world. I agree. And if we uh, do something about it? Whatever we do, it's bound to inflame relations with Moscow. And if we do nothing? Even more dangerous. How do you read it, Chip? I have to say, uh, first of all, I, uh, I misread it. You mean you uh, still find it hard to believe that uh, Khrushchev would trust Castro with offensive missiles in Cuba? I didn't think he would trust him, but he, he does. Castro's attitude since the Bay of Pigs uh, has to be belligerent, to say the least. And you don't think that uh, Khrushchev may have given much thought as to what our attitude may be in response? Oh, I'm sure he thought about it. But... Uh, I'm sure he's doing this to uh, take the heat off his own political problems in Moscow. Well, maybe he's uh, playing another game. Maybe he, uh, maybe he's aiming to trade his missiles in Cuba for ours in, uh, in Italy and Turkey. Soviets have never before trusted their own satellites with this scale of missile. So it must be part of a bigger strategy of aggression. I agree, Mr. President. And if we don't act firmly, 
we make the Rio Treaty and the Monroe Doctrine appear absolutely worthless. And the longer we wait, the more Khrushchev has to gain. I agree. What uh, kind of surveillance do we have going on right now? Two U-2 flights a week. I want those increased to uh, 20 flights a week. Yes, sir. I need more detailed photographs, more information, more evidence. Very well, sir. Thank you. What do you want said about this? Nothing, and I do mean nothing. Nothing to wives, nothing to secretaries, nothing, period. Dean, I want you to find out what kind of support we can get from the OAS and uh, NATO. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bob, I want you to uh, draw up a detailed plan for a uh, full military assault on the island of Cuba. Yes, sir. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is a... Uh, sit down, please. This is a... Uh, secret uh, committee, a, uh, an executive committee of the National Security Council. There will be no disclosures of any kind as to the uh, presence of these missiles in Cuba, not until I decide what we're going to do. This time, things are not going to get out of control. This time, we are going to dictate the course of events. Thank you very much. You'll be notified about the next meeting. What do you think? Oh, I know how... Uh... Tojo fell planning Pearl Harbor. I know what you mean. What about your schedule? Should we cancel the trip to Chicago? I'm not sure yet. No, I think maybe you should go. See, I think everyone's intimidated by your presence. I think they, they say what they think you want to hear. See, maybe you should uh, go to Chicago. Let me stay. Let me work with them. Let's see if we can reach a consensus on an alternative to uh, airstrikes and invasion. That could be the way to go. We'll proceed as scheduled. Let's give it a try, and uh, let's include Dean Atchison as well. All right. Thanks very much, Bob. Sure. What the hell should I trade, Adline? There must be a peaceful diplomatic solution. If you pull our missiles out of Turkey, then most likely they'll pull uh, theirs out of Cuba. Why the hell should I be dictated to? I mean, why should I be uh, forced to act under a threat? Because they put you in that position. The alternative is war. Then we'll one move away from total obliteration. What for? The removal of some missiles? Is that the basis for starting a final war? I don't think a sudden airstrike is wise. On the contrary. I understand. And uh, believe me, I appreciate your point of view. Don't put me through that Bay of Pigs all over again. No, no, that was an entirely different situation. And uh, in the long run, it didn't do us that much harm. But uh, this time... There aren't that many choices. Can't you spell out the danger at your foreign policy press conference? When is it? Tomorrow. That's right, of course. I'm not going to say anything to the press. I'm going on with my speech to Chicago, and uh, I'm not going to cancel any campaign appearances yet. I'm sure that's wise, but remember, we're facing total war. There isn't anything else more serious. I hardly have to say that, do I? No, you do not. And uh, no affront to you, Adline, but uh, those missiles must be neutralized. I'm sure I don't have to say that either, do I? Thank you, Adeline. Do you uh, have something, Dave? Yes, Mr. President, this just came in. Very well. Thank you, sir. Thank you.